Welcome back to Kyle's Garage. Today, we are on a field trip to start this episode, and that is because it's early Saturday morning. I'm headed over to the Redline Rebuild Garage, which is normally David's stomping grounds. But since it's Saturday morning, they don't have a project running. The whole crew is out, which means I can sneak in, and use the parts washer and the sandblaster shamelessly before going back home. So I'm going in, I've got the transmission, I'm gonna clean all the grease and oil off of that and get all of the clutch material, well not clutch material, all the throw out bearing material out of the bell housing. I'm gonna sandblast a couple pulleys and a few other little things and then I will be ready to start reassembly as soon as the new parts arrive, which I just finished placing the order on. As soon as that box arrives in the mail, I can go out in the garage, everything's ready to go, stab the engine back in the car and hopefully be motoring soon. I'm back in the garage from my field trip. My transmission is clean. It's not spotless, but it's cleaner than it was, and that's really all that I'm after here, uh, especially inside the bell housing where all of the graphite from the throwout bearing uh, coated everything with some really nasty uh, gobbledygook. So, left that alone, I'm assembling everything there, and the next thing I want to address is actually here in the back of the crankshaft, and that is the pilot bushing, this uh, centered bronze bushing that is pressed into a dimple of the back end of the crankshaft. And I want to remove that because a new one of these is cheap. These are like a buck 85. And if they fail, it just, it's a pain. So yet another while I'm in there type situation, but uh, it's a small investment worth the money. And the trick I'm going to use to do this is I have just a little piece of bar stock uh, that happens to be about the right diameter to fit in the worn out pilot bushing. So I can push that in there. And I'm going to pack that full of grease and then use this piece of stock, hit it a couple times and it will push that bushing out for me. There is a specialty tool that you can rent uh, from most parts stores and parts houses I've never actually used it. I prefer this method, it's nice and easy. Some people use bread instead of grease. Uh, I just don't like letting bread go to waste. So I'll make a sandwich for lunch and then I'll use my grease to pop this bushing out. Just see the bushing pressed in past the flywheel all the way into the crankshaft. So what I do for this is I'm gonna try and fill this with grease. And so I use an acid brush so I can get a big old glob of it and force it in there. Usually this takes two or three times really to work. Smash another glob of grease in there. And there is our worn out bushing, just like that. Then I just have to clean the grease out of there and make sure I don't get any on the friction surface. So you can see our new versus old here. And the old is a lot thinner exterior dimension. So this one you can see has been worn down by that input shaft spinning. And our new one is a lot tighter fit. So we're going to get that sunk into the crankshaft. Replace this worn out one. I want to be careful to try and drive it in as square and as straight as possible. All right. And that is about the same depth that it was, which is important because if I don't set that in deep enough, uh, depth wise, the input shaft will not be able to stick in far enough and my transmission will want to bolt up to the back of the engine. And if I sink it in too deep, it's supporting the very, just the very tip of the input shaft. And with the new pilot bushing installed, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the flywheel and go ahead, put on the new clutch disc and pressure plate, just to go ahead and keep things moving. And so it's important to clean these surfaces off for a multitude of reasons. And the thing to use 
Just a little bit of brake clean. Take all kinds of nasty stuff off. I want to make sure that friction material is as clean as possible. Very important for our new clutch actually working. Whew. Except I'm not actually crying off camera because I got brake clean in my eyes because there's no crying in car repair. So once I have the flywheel all cleaned up, opening up my new clutch disc. Look at that beauty. So it's going slightly thicker on one side and I wanna make sure to put that thicker side out towards the pressure plate. And I will make sure that the pressure plate clears it. But if I put this on the other way, it hits all those bolts. So can't go on that way, has to go on this way. Use my plastic clutch alignment tool, sync that up. Sync that in, all right. So that looks good. So I've got my new pressure plate ready to bolt on and I'm gonna clean that off just the same way because this has a bunch of grease and gross stuff on it. I don't wanna get off. And then there's alignment dowels that I will have to use to get everything assembled properly. And that, what that alignment tool is going to allow me to do is keep that clutch disc centered because right now it's floating uh, between the flywheel and the pressure plate. That clutch disc can move around and you use that alignment tool to keep it centered so that the input shaft can slide right in and everything will align. Otherwise, you're kind of picking up the transmission and trying to move the clutch disc around, find the splines on the clutch disc as well as the pilot bushing. And so you're kind of in a, a weird place, but using an alignment tool like this will allow you to just kind of hit that straight on. You only have to worry about the splines, which is nice. Use this to pull everything in just a little bit. And I'm not actually clamping anything down just yet. I'm just getting everything to finger tight-ish where they're all even. And then from there, I'm going to kind of pull them down evenly. So I'm gonna use a standard star pattern, just like you would use on a wheel or a tire. Tightening each one just a couple turns. To tension this evenly so I don't distort anything. So the manual that I have does not have a specific, does not call for a specific torque on these, but I'm going to use the same as the flywheel spec, which is 40 foot pounds. That, that is what a bad day looks like. So what just happened there, as I was torquing that down, this hardware shattered right off. So now I have a broken bolt that should be holding my pressure plate down. So I have a bolt broken off into the flywheel. Let's go ahead and take this apart. And uh, Start looking at how we're going to get rid of that. So there you can see where I've got it punched. There in the center, it's going to allow my drill bit to bite in nice and centered. Honestly, the weirdest part about doing this is you have to remember after you put your left hand drill bit in to actually set the drill to spin left handed. Oh, look at that is luck right there, folks. This almost never happens. 
That is my lucky day. So there you go. I didn't even have to drill it out at all. That is super lucky. Uh, so now I'm going to go hop in the truck and go get new hardware for this uh, because I really don't want to deal with that again. Great. All right, back from the hardware store run. And what I did was I went out and I grabbed some bolts and then I came back and I rifled around the part stash that came with the car and uh, it actually included a set of the proper flywheel bolts that are stamped and the whole nine. So I'm actually going to use the ones that were in this garage the whole time. Uh, lesson learned. But I'm going to go ahead and bolt this up. Same song, second verse, tighten it in a star pattern. Pretty simple. I'm getting everything started by hand so that then nothing is cross-threaded. And this is probably being overly cautious, but having that one break off in the flywheel was a little bit of a reality check for me, and it's worth just taking the easy route, spending the extra five minutes tightening everything really nice and evenly, really slowly, and making sure that the torque spec is correct. So there everything is touching. It's also important to make sure that the clutch disc is properly aligned. Make sure our alignment tool is halfway centered, clamped down. And last time I was clamping these down, I was going to 40 foot pounds because that is what the flywheel bolts are. And the service manual that I have doesn't have the spec. And I think I'm going to dial that back just a little bit. I'm going to go to 30 and see how that feels, what that feels like. That feels a lot better than uh, the 40 foot pounds that I was doing just in terms of the amount of rotation and I can see the clamping force. All the fingers are nice and even on the pressure plate. All right, one more spin around. All right, and that's ready for the transmission. So let's take a quick look at everything that I've replaced on that. And we'll see if we can get the two stuck together. All right, and here is the transmission. Went ahead and re-greased a few things in here, repainted, repainted, and all that has to come off before I can actually uh, put it in the car. In the bell housing here, you can see we've got that new roller throwout bearing. I've got it clipped into the clutch fork, greased the uh, pivot in here just a little bit, retightened all the bolts down. Got a new rubber boot for back here. New rubber boot up top in the bell housing, as well as covering the other clutch fork access for if it would have been a right-hand drive car. So that is all cleaned up. It's not perfectly beautiful, but it's not greasy. It doesn't leave grime on my hands, so I'll take it. Uh, I do need to put the mount back on for the transmission mount. I took that off to repaint it, but uh, this is actually all ready to go back together. All right, this is the part where I remove all the bolts for the bell housing. So I'm just unthreading these half inch bolts that go around the bell housing. I'm gonna pick up the transmission, align the input shaft through the clutch, get it sunk on there and get a bolt in the top, get everything bolted back together. And it'll be ready for the next steps. Actually, it wasn't too bad. It's nice when it's a nice light transmission and you can just kind of foist it up on there. One of the things you saw me tighten down this bolt and it pulled together just a little bit, uh, a tip for anyone doing this at home, you're going to be really tempted if everything sets together nice and you have just a little bit of gap, even if it's just a quarter inch, you're going to be tempted to just put the bolts in there and pull it together. Don't 
do that. I can't stress that enough. Don't do that. That means something is in your way. Something is preventing those items from going together smoothly. And if they're not going together smoothly, cranking it down with the bolts is only going to break things. Everything went together smoothly with this. Fortunately, I got the pilot bushing installed far enough. So I'm going to go ahead, tighten the bolts on this and I'm on to the next project, which is probably going to be more cleaning. So, so that completes a day's worth of work here. I've made a lot of progress and it feels really good to have some things clean. I've got a new clutch installed. Everything's almost ready to go back in the car, but there's a few things left to do. If you want to see what those are and keep track of this project, be sure to subscribe down below because you're going to have to wait until next Friday's video and come back and see me here in Kyle's garage where we're going to get back to work. But for now, go work on your projects.